The Bible Lands Hotel has a giant-sized model of what Jerusalem looked like during the life and ministry of Jesus. Here we can get a bird's eye view of what the temple layout looked like, where the Holy of Holies was, the location of the court of the Gentiles and the golden gate through which the promised Messiah would come. This model is helpful in guiding us through the events of Jesus' life and his final few days, his trial, death and resurrection. The Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, concentrate about a third of their writings on the final few days of Jesus' time here on earth. Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem on the Thursday of the Passover festival. They were reasonably safe from the clutches of the religious leaders who didn't want to kill Jesus during the Passover. Jesus and his disciples met in an upper room where they ate the Passover meal together. It was here that Jesus set the events of his death in motion. He knew that Judas Iscariot was going to betray him. He informed his disciples that this was about to happen, then sent Judas on his way. After dinner, Jesus took his disciples to the Mount of Olives, where he prayed and waited for his betrayer. For 30 pieces of silver, Judas betrayed Jesus to the chief priests. They travelled to the Mount of Olives and arrested Jesus while the rest of the disciples fled. Jesus was escorted to the home of Annas, the high priest's father-in-law, for initial questioning. Very late on that Thursday night, Caiaphas, the high priest, organised an emergency meeting of the Sanhedrin the Jewish ruling council. This was an illegal meeting according to Jewish law as meetings of the Sanhedrin weren't allowed to be held at night. The Sanhedrin listened to the accusations brought against Jesus. When no two witnesses agreed, the high priest questioned Jesus asking him if he was the son of God. Jesus responded, I am. And as a result, Jesus was sentenced to death for blasphemy. However, there was one problem. The Sanhedrin didn't have the authority to execute anyone, only the ruling Romans did. So, early on Friday morning, Jesus was escorted to the fortress of Antonia, where the religious leaders asked Governor Pilate to sentence Jesus to death. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the King of the Jews? And Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. Governor Pilate then discovered that Jesus was from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and wasn't under his jurisdiction. Since Herod Antipas, who ruled over that part of Israel, was in Jerusalem for the Passover, Pilate ordered that the prisoner be handed over to Herod Antipas for trial. Herod Antipas was responsible for beheading John the Baptist. He'd heard much about Jesus and even thought Jesus was the reincarnation of John. So he asked Jesus many questions, but Jesus gave no answer. Herod Antipas then sent Jesus back to Governor Pilate. No one is quite sure why, but it could have been because Herod discovered that Jesus wasn't born in Nazareth. He was actually born in Bethlehem, and that town was under Governor Pilate's jurisdiction. After Pilate again met with Jesus, he announced to the accusers four times that Jesus was innocent of the charges that were brought against him. So Pilate had Jesus flogged, hoping that this would appease the Jewish authorities. But again, they cried out for his crucifixion. Finally, Pilate tried to free Jesus according to the governor's right to release one prisoner during the Passover. But the religious leaders cried out, we want this man sentenced to death. Release Barabbas. And Barabbas was then released instead of Jesus. Finally, Governor Pilate, realizing that Jesus was indeed an innocent man, took some water 
and washed his hands of the affair, signing the orders for Jesus' execution to appease the crowd. Jesus was led away. He collected his cross and dragged it up to Golgotha, where he was crucified on the cross with two criminals either side. Jesus lay on the cross for several hours. His tunic was gambled over by Roman soldiers. The religious leaders heckled him. Finally, at 3 p.m. on Friday afternoon, darkness covered the whole land as if it were night. Jesus said his final words, it is finished, and breathed his last. The earth shook violently and the temple curtain tore in two. The religious leaders then asked for the bodies to be taken down from their crosses that evening before the Passover Sabbath day began. So Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus asked Governor Pilate for Jesus' body. They took it down, then placed Jesus in a fresh tomb cut out of the rock. Roman soldiers were then placed outside the tomb to protect it from grave robbers, and the Friday ended. The Passover began on the Friday night and continued through the Saturday. The disciples and the other followers of Jesus hid, fearing for their lives. Then Sunday morning arrived. The earth shook, the soldiers fled, and the stone sealing the tomb was rolled away. Jesus walked out alive, risen from the grave three days after his death. He revealed himself to his disciples and many, many others in Jerusalem at the time. The scriptures teach us that Jesus died to face the penalty for his people's sin and he was raised to life three days later. And those who place their confident trust in him will not perish because of their sin, but rather be raised to eternal life. The four gospel writers want to encourage us to put our trust in Jesus, reminding us that Jesus died on the cross to take the penalty for our sin, that is, death. But death could not contain him, and he rose to life three days later. Christians don't believe in a dead saviour. They believe in a risen Lord, and one day they too will be raised up from the dead to an eternal life.